Bill Maher put his petulance on full display on his Friday show when he decided to complain about efforts to contain the spread of COVID, which are basically non-existent because we're not locking down. You can essentially do whatever you want. So I guess that what he's really tired about is hearing about COVID. But either way, he tweeted out a clip of his monologue and he added, Joe Biden announced he will give away 400 million and 95 masks. The masks will come in three sizes, small, medium, and virtue signal. <laughs> <laughs> that is a joke for those of you who didn't pick up on that. Because sending out masks to citizens for free during a pandemic is not only bad, but it's also virtue signaling. Okay, hilarious. Absolutely fucking hilarious. Now, on the day that he filmed this episode, the United States recorded nearly 4,000 new COVID deaths, which is the highest since January of 2021. But Bill Maher doesn't care because he's done with COVID. He's tired of hearing about it, and he just wants to move on with his life. Now, this, it's just gone on too long. Nobody cares anymore. The, last night, the Grubhub delivery guy was eating my French fries right in front of me. I mean, it... <laughs> Too long. <laughs> People want to know when I can when can I get back to not going to the gym? <laughs> it's ridiculous, you know, you I'm t I don't want to live in your paranoid world anymore, your masked paranoid world. You know, you go out, it's silly now. You know, you have your mask, you have to have a card, you have to have a booster, they scan your head. <laughs> Like you're a cashier and I'm a bunch of bananas. <laughs> I'm not bananas, you are. I mean, the comedy here is just truly impeccable. He's giving folks like Greg Gutfeld a run for his money. Yeah, peak right-wing reactionary comedy here, folks. This is hilarious. Now, you know, he says things like, I, I just think it's gone on too long. I don't want to live in your paranoid world anymore, meaning that the people who still take this seriously, they're the ones who are delusional, not folks like me who are downplaying it as we almost hit 4,000 deaths in, in the United States again. He pretends like the people who still take COVID-19 seriously aren't also dealing with COVID fatigue. You know, if you don't want people to get infected unnecessarily so, if you don't think that people should sacrifice their own health to serve the economy, then, you know, you, you love it, apparently. Yeah, I, I love this. I definitely don't want to get back to normal. I definitely want to live in this perpetual plague forever. I, I just, his logic here is so dim-witted. He's so petulant that he kind of puts aside any critical thinking skills and he's just complaining. And, you know, he's not necessarily alone, but a lot of people want to move on. In particular, the healthcare workers who are affected by this who are affected by American citizens who have just chosen to give it up. And not just American citizens, the U.S. government who just said basically, fuck it, let it rip through the country, we're, we're done, we're not going to stifle the economy, we're just going to force people back to work too early, even if they're still contagious, we're just going to pretend as if it's not a thing. If that leads to another mutation and a new variant that infects the world, so be it. We're done with COVID-19. Even if it gets worse, if a new variant that's more contagious and perhaps worse comes along, we don't care. We're done with COVID-19. So his sentiment isn't necessarily that uncommon, you know, but him and one of his guests, Grifter Barry Weiss, was also complaining. You know, she said that she's just done with COVID-19. So I'm going to play a clip of that. But what I want to do is share a clip that Walker Bragman, a journalist who actually is taking COVID-19 seriously, uh, he put together clips of nurses and doctors talking about their experience and how fatigued they are with COVID-19 and juxtapose that with what Barry Weiss is saying. And the difference here is truly, um, it speaks to everything that's wrong with our culture of petulance and selfishness. Take a look. I'm done. With this question? No, I'm, I'm done with COVID. Uh, a lot of people are like, I'm done. I, I can't keep doing this because it's gonna destroy my own health. Oh, I'm done. It's yeah. like, I, I went so hard on COVID. I sat in that room and I held his hand and I listened to 20 people say goodbye to him. Um, and he was just one story out of thousands. I, yeah, I remember. sprayed the Pringles cans that I bought at the grocery store, stripped my clothes off because I thought COVID would be on my clothes. The upside is when they go home. But during this, uh, it's hard to put into words, but 
They may not be with us anymore, see? That's when it all really is let out. Like, I did it all. I watched Tiger King. I got to the end of Spotify. Like, we all did it, right? The worst thing is when we do our ward books in the morning and it's when the amount of RIPs outnumbers the ones that have made it down to the wards. And I think that's when it really kicks in. And they're a lot younger in the first wave, sorry. I remember thinking, that could be mum, that could be my aunt. And now I'm thinking, that could be me, that could be my brother, my boyfriend. No, we didn't all okay, do well, it. Well, here's the thing. A lot no, of we us, didn't all do it. A lot it. of us did do it. And then we were told, you get the vaccine. You get the vaccine and you get back to normal. I've been an ICU full-time for about seven years. The last two, I have been full-time through the pandemic, picking up overtime when I can. Uh, and burnout has affected me quite close to home. In uh, November and December, I made the decision that I just, for my own mental health, I had to take a step back. And we haven't gotten back to normal. It's just so awful to take care of the parents of, of dependent children who you know they have a five-year-old or a grade school kid at home or younger. It's, it's, it's awful. And it's ridiculous at this point. This whole I'm done with COVID mentality is specifically why things are so bad. It's specifically why hospitals once again are being overrun. And, you know, one of the healthcare officials in that clip stated that. It's because we're, we're tired of being inconvenienced as a society. And I get it. COVID fatigue is a real thing. I'm not saying that it's illegitimate if you too are tired of hearing about COVID-19. But to think that you have it more worse than doctors and nurses who have to bear the brunt of our selfishness, who don't get to choose to just put aside COVID-19 and pretend like it doesn't exist. They have to see this firsthand. They have to deal with the ramifications of our refusal to lock down, right? And I don't understand how there's this sentiment that we can't do anything. You can essentially do whatever you want. You can go to a restaurant, you can go see a movie, you can hang out with friends. We're not really locked down. I mean, perhaps in some states you have to wear a mask in public. In other states or cities more specifically, like New York City, you have to show proof of vaccination if you want to do particular things. But for the most part, most people in this country can just live their lives as if there isn't a pandemic, even if that you know, negatively affects the healthcare system. So I just, I don't understand what she's complaining about, especially her and, you know, fellow elite Bill Maher. They can do whatever they want. They have millions and millions of dollars and they likely live in mansions. So what are you complaining about? What can't you do that you couldn't do? Are you just sick of hearing about COVID-19 on the news? Because then just turn off your television. I, I don't know what to tell you. We're all frustrated with COVID-19, but the difference is we're grownups and we acknowledge that we don't necessarily know how this is going to play out. You know, she says things like, uh, you know, we were told that we we were promised things would get back to normal after we got the vaccine. She pretends as if healthcare officials intentionally broke their promise. Things change. It's a virus that mutates very quickly. What we're dealing with today might be very different than what we're dealing with in a couple of months from now. She acts like public health officials were just maliciously saying, get the vaccine only to break their promise because they, they just like seeing you suffer. I mean, this is this is so immature, so irrational. And this idea that, well, we should just stop caring about COVID-19 because it's more mild is very, very stupid because it affects people differently. Yes, it is more mild compared to previous strains like the original COVID-19 strain in Delta, but it hits people differently. Over the weekend, basically half my family got infected with COVID-19. I was exposed, but my mom, who I, who I was in contact with after she had gotten exposed, that's when I was in contact with her. So perhaps she wasn't virulent enough. But I mean, people in my family, I've seen this is anecdotal, but it's hit them differently. So my nephew, who's seven years old, was basically asymptomatic, had a cough. So very mild for him. But then his brother, my other nephew, who's three years old, not old enough to get vaccinated, was very, very sick, had a high fever. He was lethargic, had to go to urgent care. My mom was very sick. Thank God she got the vaccine and the booster because, you know, even if she was really worn down from this virus, it could have been worse had she not gotten vaccinated. You know, uh, other folks in my family, it hasn't affected uh, as, as harshly. So it just really depends. My niece is another one who's dealing with a really high fever, uh, massive fatigue. Uh, so, you know, sure, it, it's mild compared to the previous strains, but it's still very, very serious. It's one of the worst colds you'll ever get in your life if you want to compare this to a modern day cold, which it is not. So, you know, 
to downplay this, to just throw your hands up and say, I'm done with COVID-19 is extremely foolish. To think that, oh, well, you know, this is going to transition into endemic status in a couple of months. I really hope that that's the case. But we don't know that for sure. We are working with incomplete information. We are working with a virus that changes so quickly that what we are experiencing right now may vary in just a couple of weeks. A new variant might sweep the world by storm. We don't know. It's like trying to hit a moving target, right? You try to perfect the vaccines, a new variant comes along. You have to, you know, come up with a new formula, perhaps introduce more boosters. There's a lot that we're dealing with. So you can't just say, I'm done with COVID-19. It doesn't work that way. We're all fucking exhausted. I'm so tired of COVID-19. But guess what? That doesn't mean that I can just pretend like it doesn't exist because I'm a grown-up. I'm an actual adult and I take things seriously. I actually care about the public health. I actually care about the health of my friends and family members. Um, but one last thing I want to show you is a clip from Mehdi Hassan who responded to this. He did this in his 60 second rant and he really hit the nail on the head towards the end here where he made a comparison between Barry Weiss and his children. On Friday, journalist Barry Weiss went on Bill Maher to say she was done with the pandemic. We haven't gotten back to normal and it's ridiculous at this point. Oh. It's ridiculous, is it? On the same day that Weiss and Ma were complaining about our obsessive focus on COVID-19 and urging us all to move on from the pandemic, 3,506 Americans died from COVID. That's a higher death toll than on 9-11. In fact, that's the highest COVID death toll since last winter and one of the deadliest days of the pandemic so far. And it isn't just deaths. Hospitals are full. Three out of four of them nationwide are under high or extreme stress. In Utah, they're hospitalizing unvaccinated under fives, including babies. And look, the people who should be complaining right now are our overworked and burned out healthcare workers. But no, it's never them moaning or whinging about the pandemic. It's the Barry Weisses and Bill Mars and Tucker Carlson's of this world. And as journalist Alex Perrine points out, the people in the press and on social media complaining the loudest about COVID-19 restrictions are at this point people for whom COVID-19 is just a thing they're sick of hearing and thinking about. I mean, my young children have handled this pandemic more maturely and less childishly than the likes of Barry Weiss, who I'm sorry can't go to as many indoor parties as she'd like to. Meanwhile, another one or two Americans died from COVID in the time you've been listening to this rant. Exactly. He is exactly right. Barry Weiss and Bill Maher should feel ashamed of themselves. They should really be embarrassed, especially when you're an elite, when you're that privileged, when you have millions of dollars. What are you complaining about? There are people who have to go to work in this pandemic and they have to fight with Karens like you because they're required to say, hey, you have to put on a mask. Imagine being in that position. I mean, imagine how much worse this could be if you were just a normal person. But these two privileged pricks have mansions and millions of dollars and they're still not satisfied. They just want it to feel more normal to them, even though their lives are largely inconvenienced. He still has a large audience or, or a live audience, it, it seems like. He's still inviting on guests. So what's the difference to you? What sacrifices are you making specifically that others aren't making? It's just ridiculous. And this behavior, this attitude is a microcosm of a bigger issue in the United States where we just don't care about anyone else. We don't think about the community. We only think about ourselves. It's individualism over the community. And this is why things like viruses, pandemics are so bad here compared to other countries, because as bad as it gets, as much as we see people try to fight lockdowns and vaccine requirements in other countries, it's always worse here. It's why regardless of how bad COVID-19 gets, we will always be hit the hardest, not necessarily because we're victims, but because we have a population and a government that doesn't care. They choose to allow this to happen rather than protecting the public rather than trying to, I don't know, actually do something that will save lives and not burden the healthcare system, which people cared about at the beginning, I think for a week or so, we're just choosing to let it rip. And that's just, that's just normal to people in America. We're so brainwashed that we think disrupting the economy, even minimally, that's, that's unacceptable. You know, it's get back to work, get back to normal, this is the way it's got to be. Go back to normal as soon as possible, even though what we're experiencing currently is not normal by any means. This is abnormal. This is a pandemic. And it doesn't just go away if you complain loud enough. The pandemic doesn't have ears to hear you complain very wise. The pandemic will be here so long as it is here. But there are things that we can do to mitigate the spread of the pandemic, which you are going to complain about. So either way, I mean, Bill Maher and Barry Weiss are just completely insufferable. And uh, they deserve to be made fun of because of this stupid petulance that they put on full display, shamelessly so. Ridiculous. Were you acting like a...